Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and today I'm going to be doing a good old-fashioned book haul. Twenty twenty was the year of me trying not to buy books, trying not to add to my TBR, and I did a decent job comparatively. I bought around 60 books, give or take a little bit, and I'm actually really happy with that number because last year it was at least double that. So did a good job. This is only my third book haul of all of my 2020 purchasing, which is pretty cool. Although I did notice that my purchasing started to really ramp up near the end of 2020 and that I need to kind of keep an eye on bringing it in to 2021. But I'm excited to do this. I'm kind of rusty. I haven't done a haul in a long time, but I'm excited to do so. And we're just going to keep this intro short and sweet for once. The first book I purchased in this set is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I was nervous going into it. I was real scared I wasn't going to like it and turned out to be kind of right. I have a full discussion on Addie LaRue if you're interested. I'm sure you know what it's about. Faustine deal with the devil gone wrong, girl lives 300 years but nobody knows or nobody can remember her face. There was a lot I liked, there was a lot I supremely disliked, and I have an 18 minute discussion if you're interested. The next book I have also read which is exciting and that's Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I love this book, it's in my favorites of the year, I have a review for it, everything will be linked down below, but this is inspired by like the pre-Columbian Americas and native cultures and it just follows these four people who are kind of on a crash course to come together because of really bad circumstances. There's the religious zealot, political stuff, a bisexual siren mermaid type thing, person, excuse me, person. <laughs> I love this story. It's a first in a high fantasy adult trilogy. I loved it so much. I keep hitting my mic. Sorry. But um, I loved it to pieces. Check out my review if you're interested because it's definitely worth reading. I also grabbed, I think I got a special edition box, but I can't remember exactly. But that's The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Leslie Chu. I think this title is so dumb. The Lost Book of the White. For some reason that double the is really tripping me up and I just, I hate it. <laughs> it's stupid, it's petty, but... This is the sequel to The Red Scrolls of Magic, a trilogy that is interspersed with the other Shadowhunter trilogies, and this follows Magnus and Alec and their love story and all that kind of stuff. I like the first one a lot because it is a lower stakes Shadowhunter book. It is not so like doom and gloom, end of the world, even though like things that are going on are bad and dangerous and stuff but it's like a nice kind of one shot. Uh, I This isn't super high priority I just bought it <laughs> because I'm still Cassandra Clare trash but it's not something I'm intending on reading right away. These next six books I have to mention I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer. I purchased them from Book Outlet. I don't support Book Outlet as a company. I will not continue to support them but I had a gift card that was gifted to me last year for Christmas, so 2019 Christmas, and I was just kind of sitting on it for a while because I didn't know what to do with it when Book Outlet exposed their asses to be racist and they don't really want to change that. So I don't support them. I will never support them again. I just stumbled upon it one day, forgot I had it, and was like, oh, you know what? I guess you should use it and get it out of the way. The first book in the stack is A Hero Born by Jin Young. I don't know much about it other than it is translated Chinese historical fantasy that's really popular. It's part of my 20 books to read this year, so I'll definitely be reading it in 2021. And the only plot point that I know is that happens is that Genghis Khan is a character and that our main character maybe has to infiltrate that. I keep hitting my mic. We're going to move it over there because I keep smacking my mic and I don't want to deafen anyone. I'm excited to read it because it's older fantasy. I think it was published in like the 50s. So I think this will be a very interesting read and I'm not sure if I'll like it or not, but I am excited to give it a shot. I also grabbed Storm of Locusts 
by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the sequel to Trail of Lightning, a book I read in 2020 as well and really enjoyed from Rebecca. This is set in a dystopian post-apocalyptic future where basically like native peoples have been kind of walled off from the rest of the world and like nobody can come in, nobody can go out. They're just in like this one area and there are monsters in this world. Our main character happens to be a monster hunter and she gets roped into something she does not want to have to deal with. And I remember when I finished book one, I was like, oh my God, I need book two. I need to read it now. And I didn't have it. Now I do and I'm excited to read it. These books are like under 300 pages, so they just like fly by. I also grabbed The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. If I remember correctly, this came out early 2020 and it had a lot of buzz before it released. And then there were a lot of mixed reviews from what I've seen. Some people really liked it. A lot of people thought, mm, not so much. And I'm still interested in it because it follows this orc girl who is basically grown up knowing that she's meant to be sacrificed. And then she gets saved from like this sacrificial thing. Then in a turn of events, she ends up having to become an assassin and kill the person who rescued her. I don't know if this is part of a series and I like the idea of reading about like different like fantasy races because I haven't done that a lot in my fantasy reading so I think it'll be interesting. I also grabbed The Toll by Neil Schusterman. This is the third and final book in the Scythe trilogy, a trilogy I still haven't even started. Scythe is incredibly popular but it follows this like utopian society that has conquered death. Because of that there is this organization that is in charge of like culling the earth's population because nobody's dying probably very corrupt and then there are two main characters who are apprenticing at the very beginning of scythe to become scythe it's a weird word for plurals anyway i'm interested in it i hope i really like the series because i have all three of them i've heard mixed things about this final book though so we'll see i'm also really happy i have this in my hands and that's middle game by shauna mcguire this is a kind of like, I think, contemporary sci-fi, maybe fantasy blend in which there are two t kids, Roger and Dodger. They're twins and they've been raised separately because the person who's raising them like wants to ascend to godhood. It's a really weird premise, but I think I'll really like it. And I haven't managed to read anything by Shauna McGuire other than her Wayward Children series. So I think it's high time I try something different. And I'm really, really thrilled that I have this in my hands. And the final book of my book outlet stack is Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. I think I needed something small to get to my shipping minimum. So I went with this one. This is a second chance contemporary romance between I think two individuals who like were in love as teens but then the male main character betrays the female main character's trust with like betraying her secret and I think they come across each other again as adults and things happen. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this to be honest. I don't love second chance romance from like the few that I have read something about it that just doesn't quite do it for me but I hope I'll like this one because I've been having a bit of issues with Christina Lauren and I don't know if I'll continue to read their books if I dislike this one. You'll see why in a, in a minute. The next couple books I purchased used in September to, and October. The area I lived in was actually pretty safe in terms of like COVID and the pandemic and things were looking really great. I remember going to a bookstore because I was like, great, I actually went to two used bookstores. And uh, thinking about that now compared to what is happening in Ontario at this moment is, is wild and honestly deeply upsetting. But I found Half a King by Jill Abercrombie. I remember seeing it, getting really excited because this is an author that I've wanted to read for a really long time. And I looked it up on Goodreads and it's the first of one of his many series. So I'm like, you know what, first in a series, why not purchase it even if I have I haven't read his other stuff. I also found Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is the start of a post-apocalyptic dystopian future. I know it's sci-fi where 
these scientists are like gearing up to go into this like hazardous zone in which like really weird shit's been going down and I think they are, want to study it. I purchased this right before I read Born by Jeff Vandermeer and I didn't love Born, but I still want to give this a try. There is a movie that was made of it featuring some people I really like as well. So hopefully I can read this, watch the movie. I think I'll like it. I hope so. If not, then maybe Jeff Vandermeer just isn't for me. In the same day, I went to a different used bookstore and then I couldn't get over what I found there because I just thought it was so ironic, but I found The Blade Itself and Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. It was so strange. Two different stores, both Joe Abercrombie, but this, these are the first two books in the First Law Trilogy, a trilogy I'm dying to start. It's grimdark, hella adult, and I know it just follows like terrible people, like absolute fucking terrible people, and I'm just excited. I've heard that it's slower paced, but I'm like really jazzed to give it a shot. I actually passed up another book that was there, if I'm remembering correctly. I think there was one of his standalones that were like way later on in the series, and I passed that one up because I was like, you know what? See if you like him first before you go and buy four different books by the same guy in the same day. I had this next book, I had this next book pre-ordered for months because I was so thrilled to get it. And that's none other than The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. I love this series so, so much. I've been talking about it for so long. I have a full reading vlog. If you're interested, this is the third and final book to the popular trilogy. Basically, my most anticipated release of 2020 or one of the two and it lived up to my expectations. I definitely loved it. Everyone knows what the poppy war is about, right? I don't have to describe it, but I loved it. It broke my heart also on my favorites of 2020 list. You know what? I'm just going to talk about these next books now because I don't actually know when I got them. I purchased the Illumicrate editions of the poppy war. They put out a special edition. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. And I did an unboxing for it if you're interested, so I will also leave that linked. Damn, <laughs> I'm linking a lot of my content today, but whatever. But it came with the whole trilogy, the UK versions, which have some like slight differences, and I'm gonna show you them briefly, and that's The Poppy War with Lovely Edges, The Dragon Republic, and The Burning God. I'm so glad to have these. I value them a lot. It's a really special series to me, so I didn't mind purchasing them, even though they were very expensive. Another Illumicrate purchase. I swear I'm good. <laughs> I swear I'm not usually so bad with purchasing special edition book boxes. 2020 was actually the year that I su stopped subscribing from Allocrate. I, my last box was January of 2020, and I haven't really looked back. So this is how I comfort myself with... <laughs> A little bit of splurging in purchases. I also got though Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I love this series so so much and I have to reread it this year because I read them in 2016 which means like five years. <laughs> five years. I can't believe it but I love this series so so much and when they put out this really beautiful edition with the lovely edges I had to grab it. I also purchased books two and three but I don't think those are coming until like mid 2021 but I will happily await them when I do and I'm definitely doing a reread of them this year so that's how I'm justifying this purchase. I have also read this book In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I bought this on a whim because of book club because I thought I was really gonna enjoy it and I didn't. This is a holiday Christmas romance with a Groundhog's Day element. Our main character keeps reliving the same sort of Christmas period because she kind of messed something up. This is actually featured in my worst books of 2020. I just thought it was so boring, so bland, not worth me reading it, spending the money on it. I'm really disappointed and I'm a bit nervous about Christina Lauren and my future with them. So we'll see. I also purchased Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. 2021 is the year of nonfiction for me. I'm going to be diving in and I'm nervous, but I'm really glad 
that I purchased this and I've actually already read it. This is just a deep dive into why intersectionality and intersectional feminism is the only true type of feminism. This basically debunks white feminism and how much it sucks and the power that white women hold over women of color and how white women usually never wield their power correctly. And Mickey Kendall just discusses a lot of different issues going on in the world and why they should be feminist and intersectional feminist topics of discussion and why sometimes they aren't. But I really like this, found a lot of value in it, and I'm excited to continue on in my nonfiction journey. I asked for a few books for Christmas and my mom lovingly got them for me, which I really appreciate. The first one being Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This is a young adult paranormal tale and it follows a Latinx trans boy who is determined to show his family like his gender and his gender identity because they've been very dismissive and not believing of him. So he does this like magical, he performs a spell that goes really wrong and he brings like the wrong dead person back to life, a boy that he went to school with. And this boy is kind of the, the bad boy and does not want to part with the living world just yet. And I think this is a romance as well. And I'm excited. I'll be reading it this month of January. I'm not sure when. I've literally seen only the best reviews for this story. I have not seen one bad thing about this book. I've literally only seen five star ratings for it, so I'm really excited. Although I kind of wish I saved it for Halloween, but it's fine. I also asked for Malice by John Gwynn for no particular reason other than I really want to read it and I think I was just like looking through fantasy books I marked as want to read recently and I was like, yeah, Malice. I've seen really good reviews for this mostly. Um, a lot of people really like this trilogy overall. This is a pretty hefty, chunky book, 600 pages, but I am excited to give another like high fantasy kind of modern classic high fantasy story a shot. I think I purchased more books than I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but at least the year's over, so we're starting over again. <laughs> I also got Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar for Christmas. I have been really excited for this. It's an adult high fantasy duology by Case and Calendar. I read a book by them in 2020, but it was Felix Ever After, so I'm interested to see the swap. This follows, I think, an island nation that has been colonized, and our main character in this one, she kind of is thought of as better than most of her peoples like by the colonizers so she has like a bit of power over her own peoples but she's not as powerful as like the colonizers and i believe she's going to exact a hell a lot of revenge i'm really interested to see where this book goes reviews have been all across the board for this one as well but this is a duology and the books are both rather short for fantasy okay two books left and this is my last christmas book i got the skin we're in by desmond cole also part of my nonfiction initiative i specifically asked for this one because this follows or is i think a memoir or a discussion of a black man here in canada yeah this is just one year in the struggle against racism in this country of Canada, which is really, really interesting and necessary reading for me because I'm Canadian and a lot of anti-racist literature comes out from the States and the UK. So I'm very excited to have this in my hands and to learn about something. Frankly, I'm pretty not knowing in because the US tends to dominate headlines, including like like in Canada, I'm sometimes a lot more familiar with what's happening in the US than my own country, which is not great. So I'm looking forward to this, to learning a bit more. And my final book I purchased in 2020 was done on a whim. Essentially, I was buying something from my mom on Indigo's website and I needed to hit free shipping, so I purchased a book, and that's The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I finished 
the I almost called it the inheritance trilogy I finished the broken earth trilogy in 2020 and loved it and I haven't read anything else by NK Jemisin and this one was kind of like new and shiny and like <laughs> really in my face for whatever reason I just wanted to buy it I also love the way that this book has been constructed I love that it's like really dark and black but with all the neon like it's stunning from what I know this is a little bit different from NK Jemisin in the past, this is an urban fantasy set in New York where basically all of the New York boroughs are personified and slash maybe gods <laughs> and then something happens and they have to like fight back. I can't wait to read this, although I might wait for a little bit to see like news on a sequel because I haven't seen anything really. So these are all the books I got in the last two and a half-ish months. So not great in terms of my buying, but still better than the past year. I'm still learning, still doing better. Who's bothering me? Let me know down in the comments below any thoughts you have on any of the books that I've mentioned today. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.